Hello students, today we are going to study English literature paper for semester 2. So the first question is, read the lines given below and answer the questions after each. A. Iris. Of her society, be not afraid. I met her deity, cutting the clouds towards Pepphos, and her son dove drawn with her. Whom does Iris refer to as her? Pehle aap khud sochein, fir aap answer dekhein. Iska answer hai Venus. Option A. Next question is, why was the person afraid of her? Option A is, she used her beauty to get her desires. B. She had conspired with this up to abduct the person's daughter. C. She was close to Zeus. D. She used to others for her ends. Answer is option number B. She had conspi conspired with this to abduct her person's daughter. Okay, so third question is, what is meant by dove drawn? Options for this is A. A drawing of doves. B. Attracted by doves. C. The chariot was drawn by doves. D. Doves were drawn to him. Answer is option number C. The chariot was drawn by doves. So, the next question is, but my darling, if you love me, thought Miss Meadows, I don't mind how much it is. Love me as little as you like. Now question number one for it is, what had the darling informed Miss Meadows? A option that he loved her. B that he could not go forward with their plans for marriage. C that the marrying someone else. D that he was going away. Answer is option B that he could not go forward with their plans for marriage. Next question is, where was Miss Meadows as she thought of these lines? In the music hall, B in the corridor, C at her window, D in the principal's office. Answer is option A in the music hall. Next question is, what was the effect of the Basil's letter on Miss Meadows? A. She was upset and agonized. B. She went into depression. C. She was struck dumb. D. She had a heart attack. Option A. She was upset and agonized. C. Next question is, Sophocles long ago heard it on the Egan. A. Who is Sophocles? A. A Shakespearean character. B. A poet's ancestor. C. A Victorian poet. D. A Greek tragedian. Answer is D. A Greek tragedian. Next question. What did he hear on the Egan? A. A tremendous sad note of the sea. B. The sound of girls. C. The sound of human misery. D. A note of hope. Answer is C. The sound of human misery. Now it's turn of section B. Answer the following questions as briefly as possible and with the close reference to the relevant text. Question number 2. Number 1. Referring closely to the conversation between Prospero and Ferdinand at the beginning of the Act 4 of the Tempest, bring out Prospero's concerns as a father. Answer. At the beginning of Act 4, Prospero states how he planned to test Ferdinand's love for Miranda by giving him a manual task to perform. Ferdinand is also successful in the test of Prospero by doing all the tasks sincerely even though he was a prince. And such tasks are against his honor. Prospero is happy with the way Ferdinand has passed his test. He is now convinced that the young man is worthy of Miranda. He wanted to secure Miranda's future so he subjected the young man to harsh treatment. Thus, Ferdinand's hardships are evidence that prove that Prospero was concerned father who wanted only happiness for her beloved daughter. Part 2. How does Prospero prove the rarer action in his virtue than in vigilance? In the final act of the Tempest before confronting his enemies, Prospero tells Ariel that rather the action is in the virtue than in vigilance. That is, it is better to forgive than to hate one's enemies. This is the example that Prospero provides in re reuniting everyone in the final scene. He proves this by forgiving all those who did wrong with him and Miranda. Though he accuses each of them of the crimes they did, he forgives them in the end. He also appreciates Gonzalo by calling him an honorable man, accusing Antonio of an unnatural brother and blaming Alonso for the loss of Miranda. Still, in the end, Prospero gives up his magic and returns to Milan and plans the wedding of Ferdinand and Miranda. He set Ariel and Caliban free, thus giving it a happy ending. 
क्वेश्चन थ्री रेफरिंग क्लोजली टू द शॉर्ट स्टोरी द साउंड मशीन डिस्क्राइब द एनकाउंटर बिटवीन क्लॉसनर एंड मिसिस सॉन्डर्स हाउ डिट इट ए फॉर्म हिज बिलीव इन हिज ओन इन्वेंशन आंसर क्लॉन्सर वॉज सरप्राइज टू हेयर अ पर्सिंग क्राई एंड वॉज फाइंडिंग द सोर्स टू द क्राई एट वांस ही सॉ मिसिस सॉन्डर्स हिज नेबर कटिंग द स्टेम ऑफ ए रोज प्लांट ही वॉज शॉक टू हेयर द पर्सिंग क्राई जस्ट एट द टाइम वेन शी वुड कट द स्टेम He was confirmed that the piercing cry came from the rose plant. When he asked her to cut it again, and she did, he then asked her to stop cutting as it pained them, just as a person would be in pain when somebody cuts his or her wrist. But Mrs. Saunders always believed Clonser to be a peculiar and crazy man. However, she thought the best would be to stop her cutting the stem of the plant and go back to her house to avoid any further conversation. Clausner tried to learn from that incident. He tested his invention the next day on a tree. So this incident had to put firm, firm beliefs in his inventions. Next question. Then paint the cut with iodine. With reference to this line, what is your understanding of Clausner? Do you sympathize with him? Give your answers. Answer. Clausner is so pricked by the pain of the trees that he asked Doctor Scott to stitch the gash of the tree and paint iodine on it. He does this only to oblige Clausner. Neither Doctor Scott nor Mrs. Saunders believe in the strange theory of Clausner. In fact, they do not. They are not so sensitive to the environment around them as Clausner is. They represent the worldly people who care little for plant life. Yes, I sympathize with him. Clausner is extremely sensitive and a man with a good heart. He is able to feel the pain of a tree just as if it was a human. To insensitive people like Mrs. Saunders, Clausner was a crazy. But actually, these insensitive people are peculiar as they avoid conserving the environment, which is essential for human survival. Question four. Referring closely to the story, the singing lesson related with what Basil wrote in his letter to Miss Meadows. What do you conclude about Basil's from the tone and wording of the letter? Answer: Basil considered Miss Meadows and his marriage as a mistake. He further wrote in his letter that he loved her but considered himself not a man who could marry, and did not want to settle down with her. In fact, she considered. Uh, in fact, he considered the idea of settling down with her. her as a disgust he broke miss meadows heart though his heart and according to her he did not love her had he loved her he would just cancel the marriage i conclude from the letter that basil that he was a very fickle and insensitive man who neither thought about his fiance nor he was concerned about the consequences of his deed Question referring closely to the story B. Wordsworth relates two important lessons that the young narrator learned from his friend B. Wordsworth. How were these lessons relevant? Answer: B. Wordsworth helps the narrator's kid to grow and teaches him important lessons about life and leisure. The narrator's strict mother serves as a foil to B. Wordsworth's accommodating nature. He lets the boy discover things by himself and even entertains his idea of placing the pin on. on the water to see what happens next he teaches the kid to delight in everyday experiences we take for granted and presents him with a fresh pair of eyes to observe and soak in the wonders of the natural world throughout the story many insights are given to beat words words on what is to be a poet Though his conversation with the boy, we learn that the being a poet is so fully of sensitivity that one can cry at both the joys and sorrows. These lessons are relevant and important to a peaceful life. We need to discover who we are and what is meant for us to be. We can do how we can spend our life full of crests and throes. Question five, referring closely to the poem, where we are the music makers, refer to the. Two examples given by the poet, which identify poets and singers as the movers and shakers. The poet says that these artists are the movers and shapers of the world. By the phrase, he means someone who colors outside the lines, people who show the world, and a phrase outside the social norms and ethos. People capable of moving and shaping the world and possibly building a new one. Those who bring them mentally. To an otherwise static world, they move, shake, and stir the world by bringing radical changes in the society. Their artistic creations rouse up emotions that help us take necessary steps. Artists throughout their powerful works bring about a revolution. The powerful art rebels against the status. 
क्वेश्चन टू ब्रिंग अबाउट ए चेंज नाउ द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द सैम्पल पेपर डिस्कस हाउ द पोएम डोवर बीच द पोएट मैथ्यू एंड रिपोजिस फेथ इन लव हैज ए बीम ऑफ होप एडमिस्ट द सराउंडिंग डिसअपेयर आंसर इन द वर्ल्ड डिवॉइड ऑफ फेथ Matthew Arnold the poet has depicted the confronting power of love the only solace the speaker finds in a dark chaotic world where there is neither certitude nor peace nor help for pain is love the poet firmly believed that christianity was that he insin- his instinct told him that the human kind desire to believe in something that could give force and a meaningful meaningful to life The modern world with its science and commercialization cannot provide what human beings desire the poet thus believed that the only love that and compassion somehow can restore is man's faith in religion and in god godness of the world thank you students please like and subscribe to my channel follow for more updates i will be posting model test papers for english literature daily so please don't forget to see every day my channel Thank you